Welcome back. How will AI impact our economy? Our next guest has said some short-term estimates of it having a big impact are overblown. We talked about that on this program a little while ago. But in a New York Times op-ed last week, he named it as one of the three factors driving the coming economic storm, which he also says America is unprepared for. Oh, and he just won the Nobel Prize in Economics, along with two other researchers. That was for his research on economic development and, inst and institutions. Joining me now is MIT economist and Nobel laureate, Daron Asimoglu. Welcome back and congratulations. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you. What are you going to do with the prize money? Oh, I'll find a way to spend it. <laughs> the, the U.S. economy needs all the stimulus it can get, so I'll, I'll use it. Why are you so downbeat? I should have had a copy of The Economist. It, it shows America's kind of like this rocket ship. It's this island of prosperity in a, a world. You've probably read the Draghi report about Europe. Um, yeah. but, but what do you see that everybody else is missing about why our good times um, could dissipate? Well, you know, first of all, I don't think we've had such amazing good times. If you look at the measure of productivity growth that economists focus on, it's been pretty slow for the last 20 years. If you look at real wages, there is some movement over the last five or six years. But, you know, since 1980, about half of the U.S. has had pretty anemic wage growth. So it's not amazing times. Now, I think there is an opportunity for us. And the economic storm is really both a challenge and an opportunity. I talk about AI. I talk about aging. I talk about the remaking of globalization. All of these things are threats because they are big changes, but they're also opportunities that we could use in order to make ourselves more productive, workers more productive, workers earn more. In fact, even reduce inequality. Sure. But the problem is that we're not prepared for it. So I will say that it would be it would be awful of us to celebrate or champion an American economy that was the fruits of efforts planted decades ago that we are no longer planting. And if conditions have changed and are going to lead to a different, well, it's incumbent on us to recognize that they've changed and try to improve that so that 30 or 40 years from now, another economist, Arto Hill, can be talking about how great America is doing. Here are the factors that you think are problematic. Number one, aging workforce, fertility decline. Number two, automation and AI. And number three, changes to globalization. Are these reversible? And, and how do they come together to, uh, to create a, a problem? A lot of people say AI solves the demographic issue. I think they do interact, and AI could help solve the demographic issue. Robots can help solve the demographic issue, but the demographic issue is a very big one. It's not reversible. More immigration, especially new, younger people coming in, could slow it down. But the whole world is in the middle of a demographic transition, and the U.S. used to be a very young economy, and that contributes to entrepreneurship, risk-taking, a lot of demand. That's not going to be the case anymore. So that's something that's going to hit us, and we are not getting prepared for it in terms of changing jobs, making jobs better, more uh, easier for older people to perform, and also investing in people so that they can do different tasks and work alongside robots that we will need to use more. AI, I don't think that's reversible either. There's a lot of investment in AI. This direction is to be determined. I think we can steer it in different directions, and some of it may be better than others. Globalization, I think that may be reversible. I'm not sure, but I think they're coming. Yeah. So it's interesting. Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of people would say fertility is reversible. But the one I really want to talk about, actually, is uh, work from home. So going back to the point about keeping every possible person in the workforce, at, I understand why companies want to bring people back to the office who have been set up that way and been successful that way. That's fine. But I hope that overall there's still a lot of options for remote work to continue because anecdotally that's where I hear many, many people who had been disassociated from the workforce able to come in, stay in, maybe work a little while caring for you know, people who are older or younger than them. So I, I'd hate to see that you know, kind of be a relic of, of COVID. Absolutely. I think you are absolutely right. Working from home is going to be an important element of our workforce policies, and I don't think we want to give it up. On the other hand, I think we are just coming to grips with what does it mean, for example, to form teams so that people work together, they learn on the job. A lot of investing in people is about on-the-job training. So how do we do that when people work from home? I think there are some questions for us to tackle. Technology will have to play a role. But I think the most important thing that I try to emphasize in that New York Times article is that we need to invest more in people, in the American worker, than we are doing at the moment. All right. I don't want to kind of leave this on too overtly political of a note, but you are also concerned uh, or endorsing Harris and her economic policies. We're seeing bond yields right now kind of rising sharply on the long end. Some say there's a political reason for that. Others say not so much. Um, do you want to just kind of leave with a parting thought on, on what's happening with the U.S. economy right now in this very moment? 
Well, I mean, I think the U.S. economy right now is appears relatively resilient, much more so than it did several years ago. And I think one of the reasons why uh, I like Harris, the, the Harris economic plan better, because it has more in terms of worker training and uh, uh, thinking about ahead of the curve about AI. I think, you know, for example, across the board tariffs or you know, big tax cuts are not what we need right now because we need a lot of resources to invest in the American worker. Okay, understood. Although you could say that both Harris and Trump have very similar kind of deglobalization kind of policies. That's right. The devil's in the detail. We'll see. All right. <laughs> Daron, congratulations again on Thank the Nobel you. Prize. Uh, I'd be curious how you spend it, you know, at some point if you do none of my business. <laughs> but um... Well, I'll share it. I'll share it. All right. Thank you so much. We hope to have you back Thanks soon. Daron Asimoglu with MIT.